Welcome to Grace Lutheran Church here in Tomahawk, Wisconsin. This is our Sunday, August 2nd, 2020 service live stream coming to you. I'd like to thank you and thank the past wilderness trip groups for the background pictures that we will see today. That picture on the slide is a picture a group from Grace took when they were on their wilderness trip. I'm the interim pastor, Gary Brandenburg. Helping us with technology today is Mike Wick. Our projection person is Karen Torgelson. And the person that creates our liturgy is Sandy Pellicori. On the next slide, you will see that you're invited to Grace Lutheran Church to join us in our parking lot Holy Communion service. It will be each Sunday It'll start this Sunday, August 2nd, 2020. It starts at 9 o'clock, 9 o'clock a.m., and the service will be on your car radio, so you'll stay in your radio. We don't want you getting out of the car and going visiting because we want to keep proper settings. The FM channel you will use is channel 104.1. That's FM channel 104.1. Point one, and it will reach at least two blocks from Grace Lutheran Church. We'd like to thank John Krieger from the Krieger Funeral Home for providing this for us at no charge. So thank you, John. This is a real gift to our church and our community. During that service, if you can keep the slide on, uh, I want to tell you I'll be wearing a mask during Holy Communion. I'll be wearing gloves during Holy Communion, and so will all the people serving in that service. And when you receive Holy Communion, it'll come to you in a paper plate, just like this, and you will receive grape juice. Notice it's grape juice, not wine. And it has a wafer, a bread wafer on the top, and this has been sealed, so Sometimes when you open it, it can create a vacuum which will cause you to spill some juice. So we're suggesting you take this home or drive out of the parking lot because it'll be continuous. We want cars to be moving. And we will have people in the parking lot who are like parking lot ushers. And they will help us move through this experience. So again, you will receive communion in a plate like this, and you can take as many as you will need for that Sunday. What is this? This is our offering basket. We're, we're not one of those churches that won't let you out of the parking lot until this is full. It, it's just a place that you can drop an offering if you have one. And I want to thank you for your generosity in uh, supporting our church during this most difficult time. There's also a basket in the entrance of the church, but we don't want you getting out of your car. So you can lower your window, and if you have an offering, you can drop it in here. Okay, that's the slide. August 2nd, 9 o'clock. Uh, this month, our fair, fair trade ministry items are available to be purchased through the church office. You can call the office, and Debbie or Sandy, our church secretaries, will have your items ready for you to pick up. Please bring the correct change or a check to avoid the need to pass money back and forth. Thank you for your support of this ministry, Fair Trade Ministry. On the next slide, you'll see our call committee members, Eric Anderson, Sherry Clements, Samantha Colburn, Nancy Herbison, Heather Kurth, Martin Schmidt, David Schmidt, and Margie Welke. These people are working with our bishop in our synod, interviewing potential pastors for our church. Their work will be given to church council. Church council will present whoever the candidate is to the congregation, and sometime in the future there will be a vote to call a new pastor. Our next slide is about our August special offering, which is for our sister's house. It's here in Tomahawk, it's a homeless shelter. The website is listed there, our sister's house, tomahawk.org. Telephone number is 
3520. Thank you for your support to this local ministry in our community. Our next slide is the introduction for our service today. In today's first reading, God invites all who are hungry or thirsty to receive food and drink without cost. Jesus feeds the hungry multitude and reveals the abundance of God. At the Eucharistic table, we remember all who are hungry or poor in our world today. As we share the bread of life, we are sent forth to give ourselves away as bread for the hungry. Our service starts with our gathering hymn. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you as we share in our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. 
by your spirit, lead us so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved God, by the radiant, radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace through God, through Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join me in our prayer of the day. Gracious God, your generosity waters the world with goodness and you cover creation with abundance. Awaken in us a hunger for the food that satisfies both body and spirit. And with this food, fill all the starving world through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Isaiah. If you have a Bible, you can turn there with me to Isaiah chapter 55, verses 1 through 5. The introduction goes like this. God invites Israel to a great festival, feast at which both food and drink are free. God also promises to make an everlasting covenant with all peoples, with promises that previously had been limited to Israel. As David was a witness to the nations, these nations shall now acknowledge the ways in which God has glorified Israel. The reading. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come, buy, and eat. Come, buy wine and milk, without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourself in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Join with me as we read our psalm together responsibly. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Lord, you are good to all and your compassion is over all your works. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all who wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. You are righteous in all your worries and loving in all your works. You are near to all who call upon you, to all who call upon you faithfully. You fulfill the desire of those who fear you. You hear their cry and save them. You watch over all those who love you, but all the wicked you shall destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord. Let all flesh bless God's holy name forever and ever. The end of our psalm. At this time, we will receive our children's message. If you'd gather around your computer or TV, as our children would normally come on a Sunday to have the children's message, we receive that message today from Pastor Nancy Richmond. You there, Mushka! Good morning, Lily. How are you doing this fine day, Mushka Babushka, my good friend? I am doing quite well, I thank you. Mushka, I have a question for you. What is it, Lily? What is it you are wondering about? 
What's with all these weird stories that Jesus tells? Ah, you mean Jesus' parables. Why does he tell them? Did they really happen? The last few Sundays in the Gospel reading from the Bible, there has been a story that Jesus told. You know, talking is okay, but I like to hear what Jesus did. Well, one of the things that Jesus did was to tell special stories called parables. Parables? Yes, P-A-R-A-B-L-E, parables. What's a P-A-R-A-B-L-E parable? It is a story that has a point to it. Well, duh, all stories have a point. Parables, they are not just ordinary stories. Jesus' parables are special stories because they teach us something about God. Oh, hey, that does make them special stories, really special. Jesus, he told stories about things that people understood to teach them about God who they did not understand. Well, that makes sense. Um, but in today's gospel, Jesus tells a whole bunch of parables. One of them was about a mustard seed, and I don't even know what a mustard seed is. How can it help me learn about God? You may not know about mustard seeds, but the people Jesus was talking to certainly did. Mustard plants grew like weeds all over his country. But they don't grow here, at least not that I know of. If Jesus were telling us a parable today, he might talk about growing a garden, or going fishing, or working in a factory, or driving a car, or raking leaves. And if Jesus was talking about a bunch of frogs, he would have told a parable about mud and rain. Uh, maybe. Parables are supposed to help us understand God, right? Yes, and how God relates to people. So next time Jesus tells a story, a P-A-R-A-B-L-E parable, I'll listen and see what I can learn about God and me from Jesus' P-A-R-A-B-L-E parable. Hey, thanks, Musha. You got it, Lily. Adios. Thank you, Nancy, for that message. Our second reading today is from Romans chapter 9, verses 1 to 5. Romans chapter 9, verses 1 to 5. And this is the introduction. This begins a new section in Paul's letter in which he will deal with the place of Israel in God's saving plan. He opens by highlighting how Israel's heritage and legacy include being God's children, having God's covenant, being given God's law, participating in worship of God, and receiving divine promises. The reading. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, his glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all. God blessed forever. Amen. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please join me in our act, gospel acclamation. Alleluia. One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Alleluia. Matthew 4.4. 4. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. And this is the introduction. Glory to you, O Lord. After John the Baptist is murdered, Jesus desires a time of solitude. Still, his compassion for others will not allow him to dismiss those who need him. And he is moved to perform one of his greatest miracles, the only miracle mentioned in all four Gospels. The reading. 
Now when Jesus heard about the beheading of John the Baptist, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, this is a deserted place and the hour is late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the village and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowd to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and two fish. He looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Today in my sermon, I would like to focus on a lesson in trust. And you will see slides that will come on the, the screen that will show that we have a lesson in trust that challenges scarcity. We have a lesson in trust that produces the reality of God's abundance. And then we conclude with a lesson in trust, asking these questions. Can we trust God's abundance as we live through the time of COVID-19? Can we trust God's abundance as we live through the time of calling a pastor? This is a time for us to, to have trust. Have trust. Today we are invited to trust and believe Jesus' free gift of love without mistrusting he's got up his sleeve some scheme to swindle our money. That's taken as an introduction from Sundays in Season, an overview of this lectionary year 18. Sundays in Season is produced as a computer ministry of the ELCA. So trust, trust, faith, and belief are translated in the Bible from the same Greek word pistis. To have trust is to have faith. To have trust is to believe. To believe in a God who is with us in the past, with us now, and will be with us in the future. This week I heard that uh, the economic report for the last quarter came out, and it's the worst we've ever had in this country. Economically, we probably feel like those disciples when they had a lesson in trust that would challenge their scarcity. On this slide, you will see five loaves and two fishes. And at the back of the church, I left that offering basket up there, or not basket, it's a bucket. And maybe they can show you that right now. Can you guys sweep over and get a, a picture of that bucket back there? It's brown, it's got offering on it. And uh, can you imagine 12 of those babies were filled by the leftover of five bread, loaves of bread and two fishes? Again, I'm not suggesting we get 12 buckets out there and fill them. I, I just want to tell you that as an image, that's what was left. That's what was taught to those disciples as they were challenged by their scarcity. How often do you echo the words of scarcity coming from the disciples? I heard it on the radio this week as I drove up from Wassa to Tomahawk about the scarcity in this country, about how our economy is, is the worst it's been perhaps before the, the Depression. You need to hear these words today because you may be under the fear of scarcity. You might be like the disciples. We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. When you look at your income and your, your loss in the stock market, if you're in it, or the things that are happening 
to your, your home and your inability maybe to understand what's going to happen in the future, you are not alone. The disciples in our gospel text today said we have nothing here. Just five loaves and two fishes. Wow. We really need a lesson in trust to understand the reality of God's abundance. Jesus, Jesus, God, took those loaves and those fishes. He looked up to heaven. He blessed them, broke them, and gave them to his disciples. And the disciple gave them to the crowd. 5,000 men. If they were married, that would be 10,000 people. If they had children, it could have been 15 or more thousand people that were fed that day. Why is that important for us today? As we live in a world in which scarcity and and the COVID-19 is coming upon us with great pressure and we're going through a process where we're calling a new pastor. We have an abundant God who wants to give us in times of scarcity an abundance. How will it come to you? I have no idea. But I have learned in my life, I have never, never, never had need that God did not meet. Sometimes I wondered if he was meeting it well enough. It didn't meet my expectation, but there has never been a time in my life when I, when I went to bed without food, without shelter, without a sense of God's care. It might not have been the food I wanted to eat. It might not have been the shelter I wanted, but God has always been faithful. And times when a country goes through I would suggest almost a judgment. We feel like we're under God's judgment. And let's look at ourselves as people. I guess we're all deserving of a little judgment. But because of what God has done, we are forgiven and we can receive the blessings that God has given to us. But we have to trust. We have to have faith. We have to believe. And we, we have to see this picture of God taking what we have, blessing it, breaking it, and giving it to the world in which we live. So the lesson in trust for us today is can we trust God's abundance as we live through the time of COVID-19, the time of tremendous financial stress? And I want to thank you as a church, you know, we don't make a big deal about money here. But I'm going to make a big deal right now about you and your giving. God is, is in this time, we're finding not an extreme abundance, but we're sustainable. God has taken care of us through you. And when it comes to COVID-19, can we trust God's abundance as we live through the time of COVID-19? As long as we do our faithful work, I think we can. The dilemma of which voice to obey in our current health struggle with COVID-19 is real. Should you wear a mask or shouldn't you? Should you socially distance? I feel sorry for the parents of our children as they have to make decisions about schooling and what their kids are going to experience. Trust God. Don't ask me for the answer. I can't give you the answer. But trust those who have given us some answers and let's live in that with an awareness that God is abundantly going to bless us in a time of extreme death and sadness in our communities. So can we trust God's abundance? I think we can as we live through the time of COVID-19. And can we trust God's abundance as we live through the time of calling a pastor? Yes, I think we can hear the voice of Jesus in the calling of a pastor. We follow a process in the ELCA which intends to hear from as many members as possible in the unity of a vote. We believe we are listening to Jesus. As an interim pastor who has one more month left in this call of interim ministry, I'm praying that before I leave, we'll hear some voices telling us from our call committee that we're doing some work. The bishop is giving us some information. And we can trust, we can believe, we can do what we have to do so that we find the abundance of God in the life of our church. 
we give thanks for that. And now we look forward to Sunday when we will gather and receive Holy Communion at 9 o'clock. Something we haven't been able to do. But we're going to do it in trust that we will be doing it safely and that we will, we will be able to, to break the bread of life with one another, which I know you have all missed. So let us hear this hymn and be aware of God's abundance in our life. And let us gather at 9 o'clock on Sundays and receive Holy Communion. And if you have any questions about how this is going to be, or any hesitancy that you won't be safe, or we won't do our best to guide you through this new experience in our church, our office is open during the week. Call. Our secretaries can help you. If I'm here, I welcome your conversation. God be with you, and let's trust God's abundance in our lives as we move through these most difficult times. Now let us hear the song, Break Now the Bread of Life. Please join with me as we share together our belief, our trust, our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In our prayers of intercession, confident of your care and help by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all those who are in need. You take resources that appear to be meager, you bless them, and there is enough. May your church trust that what you bless and ask us to share with this world is abundantly sufficient. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your bountiful creation offers sustenance and life for all creatures. Provide this abundance for all, the well-being of all. Reverse the damage we have caused your creation. Replenish ground water supplies. Provide needed rains in places of drought. Protect people from COVID-19 and protect forests from wildfires. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You offer yourself to all nations and peoples of the earth, inviting everyone to abundant life. Bring the prophetic vision to fullness that all nations will run to you and that nations who do not know you will find their joy in you. We pray this will be especially true at this time in the United States of America. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You offer freely the fullness of salvation. Give our congregation such a welcoming heart that the people of grace, that our words and our actions may extend your free and abundant hospitality to all whom we encounter. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And you gather your saints as one, united in the body of Jesus. Bring us with all your saints to the heavenly banquet. We remember with love and thanksgiving the saints we have known and those who are suffering horrendous death through COVID-19 at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing could separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray the prayer our Lord taught us. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This time we would often take our offering. I want to thank you for sending in your envelopes with your checks, for stopping by the church and placing your offerings in the entrance of our church, and for you who give online giving. Thank you. God is meeting our needs. Now let us have this prayer. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours, and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Water and word, wine and bread, these are signs of your abundant grace. Nourish us through these gifts that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. And our blessing, neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter 
bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Our sending hymn is praise the one who breaks the darkness. Thank you.